Hello and welcome back to Classic Judging by the Cover, the series about box art so old it needs a stairlift to get to the top of the discount bin, where we'll be judging Prince of Persia by the Cover. In my occasional wanderings about the displays of ancient box arts that line my personal panic room, occasionally I still see fresh details leaping out at me anew, such as when I looked at this, the cover of the classic step platformer Prince of Persia, and was immediately struck by the question, what the fuck is holding that curtain up? There's no rope tying it in place. Did someone overdo the starch? Or is someone on the other side pulling it open to expose that villainous looking Arabian man and his ill-fated attempt to steal the princess's wristwatch? And then questions beget more questions. If I knew nothing of this game, I thought, who of these four figures would I suppose to be the eponymous Prince of Persia? Surely not the person who it actually is, the one with counterintuitively the least prominence in the image, and probably not the lady either. I'm not discounting a bold defiance of gender roles, but if that lady's supposed to be Persian, then my left bollock is a horse chestnut. She looks like she'd be more at home behind a checkout counter in Pearly. Logically then, it can only be the villainous looking bloke who's looming over her, the one wearing the traditional Arabian headpiece to protect him from the harsh desert sun that isn't there. The one presumably saying, please go out with me, look at this incredible puppet show I put together to impress you. Look, this puppet's supposed to be Luigi from the Mario Brothers after we lived among the Toadstool people for too long and went a bit native. Oh please, at least give us a kiss. We're going to die anyway after the moon crashes into the earth. Then I did a bit of research and do you remember a few weeks back we did Defender of the Crown and discovered that the NES version used basically the same image as the DOS version but redrew the whole thing from scratch for no apparent reason? Well, get a load of this, shit eyes McGee. Looks like it must have been Nintendo's fucking policy at the time. Christ knows why. They must have entered some weird paradoxical state of laziness where they couldn't be asked to license the original art, but also couldn't be asked to think of anything different. You'll note that as with Defender of the Crown, Nintendo have taken the opportunity to supercharge the emotions a bit, so now the villain couldn't look any eviler if his twisted claw was crushing the head of a baby tortoise. And the princess, who still looks about as Middle Eastern as Chubby Checker, is screaming in fear through a veil that seems to be a little unclear on what a veil is supposed to do. See, this bloke's figured it out, it actually hides his face. Although he's going to be embarrassed when he realises he forgot to put the rest of his ninja suit on, and his attempts at anonymity are wasted for no one could mistake those sweet abs. I suppose he could be challenging the other bloke with the Scott Bakula haircut to a nudity competition. You show up with no shirt on, no one outdoes Ninja Simon. Ha! I'm only wearing the skirt from my daughter's school uniform. The other major difference between this and the DOS cover is the absence of that mysterious floating curtain from the background. Presumably Nintendo wasn't prepared to blow our fragile minds with that little conundrum, so now the villain's crime is exposed for all to see. Yes, get a good look, people of Baghdad. Your princess will never escape, as long as her arms are bound with a load of half-melted processed cheese. I want to go back to the DOS box art now to point out that the spectacular sword fight between the Prince of Persia and gone native Luigi was so intense and prolonged that it continued even after the other two went home and put up the box blurb, neither wanting to give up the valuable ground that is the barcode. Quite the little time capsule, this blurb. Look at how the screenshots have bulging edges evocative of a CRT monitor, a sublime commitment to honesty. Look at that first selling point. Explore over 250 rooms. Ah, remember the age when that was impressive and modern technology couldn't blow 250 rooms out of its left nostril between the serious jobs. Battle ever more skillful swordsmen. Evade increasingly diabolical death traps. We're so good at knowing how a difficulty curve works we mentioned it twice. Uniquely, the blurb for this game is written from the perspective of the villain who has a lot of time to write his secret diary while he potters around the final battle arena waiting for your slow ass to get there. 17 years- oh hang on a sec, that S is a bit more elaborate than that. 17 years have I, Jafar, served as Grand Vizier to the Sultan of Persia. Now the hour of my triumph is at hand. Already I sit on his throne, and soon I shall have his daughter as well, the princess, the Sultan of Persia not being terribly good with names, whose beauty is like the stars and the moon. 
huge, round, and constantly moving in circles. Of course I would never force myself upon this lovely creature. Hey, nobody assumed you would. You brought it up, Jafar, mate. What a suspiciously specific denial. The blurb goes on like this until the very last sentence. Mysteries that no man or woman can withstand. I'm a little thrown by how emphatically he adds the or woman part. I feel like he thinks he lost his audience with all that forcing himself on her talk, and now he's trying his best to keep things politically correct. Christ, what more does he need to do to impose his will upon innocent girls without the social justice brigade jumping down his throat? I mean, he's wearing a dress, what more do they want? 